Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 353. <coughs> we're continuing with our lesson title, After the Fall of Kingdoms, which will be part 2. Scripture indicates, after the great judgment on the human race and civilization, <coughs> the Prototokus teachers we call forth to teach those who will become elders. Now, <clears throat> I recently got what I consider clarification of something mm -hmm. that we had touched upon in our last lesson. I'd like to <clears throat> elucidate on that a little bit. <clears throat> and it has to do with two, two principles. The importance of the teachers and the timing between the pronouncement of the judgment and the commencing of the gathering. <clears throat> when when the <clears throat> beginning of sorrows takes place and the <clears throat> Rhodotokus teachers are called to commence their calling. This is the most important aspect <clears throat> from the Father's perspective. Turn to Ma Matthew 24. <clears throat> Verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? <clears throat> the Prototokus teachers come into their own at this point. The most important thing, as I see from the scriptures, is not those that are being taught or being fed. It's the decision <clears throat> to feed them on the part of the teachers. This is the final test to determine whether they qualify for their inheritance. Everything hinges on not the ones that have come forth to be fed, everything hinges on the determination of the teachers to feed them. And what we find in the scriptures is the Lord isn't even focusing on those that are being fed. He's focusing on the attitude of those that feed them. Notice what it goes on to say. <clears throat> Blessed, verse 46, is that servant whom is Lord when he cometh so fine, so doing. Everything's focusing on the teacher. Did he fulfill his calling to the fullest? What he said, Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. And then he goes on to the evil servant that <coughs> neglects his calling. With this in mind, what we find at this time between the pronouncement, the beginning of sorrows, and the time of the Lord's appearing <coughs> is going to be the determination of the faithful servant to feed the Lord's sheep. For this reason, I believe, <coughs> the <coughs> those that are in heaven <coughs> that are going to be called back with the Lord will not be permitted to interfere in any way with what's going everything's going to be on the shoulders of the teachers on earth. Hang on a second. I want to clarify what I've just heard you, heard you saying. Those who are in the heavens, I'm understanding to me the first generation of Prototicus priests, will not be able to interfere. Can you expand on that as a little bit? Won't be allowed to <clears throat> influence uh, those that are on earth that need to be fed. Will not be allowed to 
in any way <coughs> have an impact in anything that's taking place on the earth. Does that in, well, does that imply that those who will not be allowed will not be allowed to give comprehension to certain people? Won't be allowed at all to manifest on the earth. Nothing, nothing. Because <coughs> the prototelkist teacher has to qualify just as they oh, have to qualify. Okay, okay. okay. So if yes. they, th those that are in heavens now, if they're not permitted to teach the ones that we're teaching, who, who are they teaching? They're not teaching. They're not teaching at all. No. Okay. At that point, okay, yeah. that was what we were trying to understand on yes. Sunday. Yes. So, <coughs> in the same vein as the counterpart is not allowed to interfere in his own earthly counterpart, it's a similar concept, isn't it? Yes. Is it because that they would, the father doesn't want someone to have an advantage that they would have if they were to receive comprehension from heaven? No. <coughs> the conditions to qualify for the inheritance have to be totally it would be like you saying when Jesus goes through <clears throat> the wilderness experience well you should you have somebody to give him a glass of water or help him rest up a little bit no you would not be allowed to interfere with his time of testing mm -hmm. the same thing is true with the prototokers on earth but only in that period yes because they've been they, they've uh, started their graduation <clears throat> I should say the graduation is complete meaning they've, they've, they've trained and that's the testing period. Which ends at the time of the Lord's appearance. So, since I know that I've had comprehension given to me from various sources, and we know that it was the word based on you know, what was received, sure. that type of help is exactly what you're talking about, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm. <clears throat> it was to get you to a certain point. Right. In which you could qualify. Gotcha. After that point, you're on your own. Praise the Lord. And the same thing is true here. What we are now doing, what <clears throat> Paul, Paulus, Silas were doing 2,000 years ago, they had a calling, called as apostles and prophets. They were to enter into their calling totally committed, totally doing what they were called to do to qualify through the opposition that they were going to experience as overcomers. The same thing is going to be true at this point. At this okay. point. So I imagine <coughs> Jude uh, exhorting the faithful to earnestly contend for faith. At that time, <coughs> I'm imagining that something similar will happen to the uh, Tokus teachers of the second generation just before the gathering, saying to those, the, uh, excuse me, just before the end of the gathering, I should say, saying to those who they've been teaching, listen, the, the gathering is coming, Keep your eyes on your on your books. I tell everyone I speak to constantly, this is not the time. Whatever it is that you're doing, which is not this, this is not the time yeah. for it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'm picturing Noah. <coughs> it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain for 20 years. Okay. So, but at some point he has to. He just stops doing that. Right. So is there gonna ever be a place where, you know? continue to remind them to look into the books because the books the Bibles are going to be taken away from us no <clears throat> what's being referred to here is not the ones you're feeding it's the feeders that you're encouraging the guy who didn't enter in his calling right. it's going to be in their midst right. you're going to be encouraging him hey look you know the Lord's coming you need to be doing this you need to be doing your brother teacher mm. you say oh, I got time Right. I, got, I can handle right. this. It's the 48 to This is what's months. being yeah. said. <clears throat> You're not going to receive any extra <clears throat> um, beyond the normal <clears throat> ability to continue on in your commitment. Nothing is going to be allowed to interfere with, encourage, or any other way of interfere with your commitment because that's going to qualify you for your inheritance. Mm. So the encouragement that he's referring to, <coughs> that you're referring to, diminishes the number of those who would be in the Matthew 24, 48 to 51 category. 
through if, if the encouragement were sufficient, is really what I'm, what I'm, I'm getting to, that number, who are 48 to 45, will diminish. If it were a, a day or two, of course. Of if course. the evil servant said, well, yeah, maybe, maybe I better listen to Chris. You right. know, maybe I got it wrong here. You know. You're encouraging him, right. you're encouraging him, but you're not going to spend a lot of time encouraging him because you got things that you got to do. And each one is on a path <coughs> for the goal. And that goal, the X, Y axis crosses when the Lord makes his appearance. We're going to take a look at right. that. My, my, yeah. not, trust me, it's not my last comment, but my comment is that since this was given to you today, we should receive that as encouragement from the Lord, every single one of us. Let's get to it. Yes, yeah. definitely. Now turn to Psalms 50. <clears throat> Fantastic. <clears throat> Psalms 50. Keep your finger there. We're going to match this up with Luke 21. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now in Psalms 50, what you have here, as you're turning, <clears throat> is the background. This takes place after <clears throat> the judgment. After the judge is a protracted period of time that has taken place since the Lord made his judgment pronunciation. When he makes his judgment pronunciation, he is still in heaven. What the world will hear is his voice in anger. He'll roar out of Zion. Now in Psalms 50, what you have is his descent from heaven to the earth. It is the end of that period in which the Prototokos teachers have been feeding his sheep. The time in which <clears throat> he's going to make his appearance. Note what it says. Our God shall come, verse 3, and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. So he's calling the heavens, the Prototokos, out of the heavens to come with him. He's going to call to the earth to judge those on earth. He doesn't have to judge those he's calling from heaven because they've already qualified. <coughs> Verse 5. Excuse, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. He doesn't judge, but he does call them. He calls them, right? Yes. He doesn't judge them, is what you're saying. No. Okay. Gather my saints together, one to me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So he's calling those out of heaven. If you have <coughs> done so and so and so and so, and they'll all know who they are, mm -hmm. come. I'm going down to reward you. <coughs> Peter, Paul, Silas, Paulus. Paulus, come forth. They descend with the Lord. It's a group. The Lord calls them His body. His body. Okay. His body. So then. Verse 6, And the heaven shall declare His righteousness, for God has judged Himself. There's a rejoicing taking place in the heavens, because they can see what's happening. The schedule now is commencing. Prototokos is coming into our own. So that group that you just um, described are called his body. Called his body. Only for that period of time? No. For, from, e eternally. From when? Eternally. eternally. So, so, so the specific group of brethren who will receive a joint inheritance is what I'm understanding to me. That group is called the body. Yes. So when we talk, when we, when we, um, I've forgotten the verse, forgive me. When we see the eagles going to wherever they went to, that uh, soma, the wizard word that we use, that, that, is that the same body? Same body. Or is that the wider body? No, same body. All the protodicals have a joint inheritance? Yes. Okay. Yes. <coughs> this is what he's doing. He's calling all those that 
partake in the joint inheritance right. to receive their reward. Okay. I wondered that exact question a couple nights ago. Interesting. And you just now, mm -hmm. you put it together and gave it to me. So this is Romans 8, 16 and 17. Yes. Now, turn to Luke 21. Just before, <clears throat> just before Psalms 50, mm -hmm. you get Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, the stress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, <clears throat> man's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now why is this happening? <clears throat> because the fourth empire is taking up residence on the earth. People are worshiping the gods. The Lord letting everybody know what time it is, who the real mover and shaker is. And he's taking the creation and he's going and shaking it into convulsions. He's got everybody's attention. Verse 27. And then they, who is the they? Everybody who has eyes, human and non-human, they... Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. This constitutes the beginning of the gathering. So how do you know? <clears throat> because the Lord pronounced it. Gather my saints to me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. It begins with the saints in heaven. It continues with the saints on earth earth. They see him in heaven, he descends with the body to earth. Turn to Luke 17. Yes, Luke 17. Starting in verse 34. He's giving us a view from the totality of the planet, the day cycle and the night cycle. What people are doing in the daylight side and what people are doing in the, in the dark side, the, the, the evening side. What's happening simultaneously. <coughs> I tell you, in that night, there shall be two in one bed. One shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two shall be grinding together, and one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be in the field, the one taken, the other left. They answered and said unto them, We are Lord. And he said unto them, Whithersoever the body is, the Lord, the saints, that are qualified for the inheritance, mm -hmm. thither will the eagles, the teachers right. of uh, <coughs> Prototokos, be gathered together. So they're all going to be gathered globally. <clears throat> they're going to be caught away globally to where the presence of the body is. Does that also imply a connection between the teacher and the students? Because the students are the body, aren't they? No. Okay. That's not, he's not referring to the students. Remember, I said this is dealing with the prototokis, teachers only. But teachers are teaching <coughs> elders. Not now. Okay. Not now. So hang they on a second. Can't. So, hang on. so this body that we're referring to are only priests. They're the saints that came with the Lord from heaven. As They're a group, which are only priests. That's a group. They're only priests. Yes. Yes, okay. We're dealing with the teachers. Gotcha. The saints, the elders are being left behind because the teacher is taken away. <coughs> Matthew 24. Hmm.
verse 46 and 47. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, when he cometh, descends from glory, when he cometh, shall find so doing. While well, he finds him feeding the sheep in the company of the sheep, he's taken from the sheep, gathered as a group of teachers, only teachers. in the presence of the master. And will that group, <coughs> to assume the answer is yes, stay intact as the body for eternity? Yeah. Right. Yes. Verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. How does he do that? He gives him his joint inheritance. Mm. And so it's a rewarding and it's a judgment. It's a judgment on this guy that got caught unprepared. It'd be a judgment on the rest of the world. The guy who was on the housetop is told to get out of Dodge while you still can. <coughs> then it's going to be a tremendous judgment. But this group, this unique group, is being given its fulfillment. What happens after this? What happens after this? Turn to Revelation, the first chapter. <coughs> the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, are the angels of the seven churches. I want to stop right there. This are the teachers that got their inheritance at the Lord's coming. <clears throat> this is what we want to focus on right now. So the seven stars are the body. No, the seven stars are the teacher. Just Elevate. I'm talking. The body is the same. Yes, but we're talking so yes, about. Right, right. We're talking here about the reward. Okay. The reward. Okay. The position. They're elevated. The Lord said, "I will make him ruler over all my goods." So they're elevated now in position. They're in their celestial body. In the heavens, waiting waiting for the commencement of the candlesticks, the churches. Churches aren't there yet. Mm -hmm. What's happening with the churches? Turn to Jeremiah 23. Mm -hmm. So the letter hasn't been delivered yet. The letter's from Paul. Oh, no, no, no. That's... <laughs> that, no, no, no. Okay. Jeremiah 23. We want to take a look at what the Lord's the Lord is declaring here. <clears throat> Verse three. <clears throat> and I personal pronoun will gather the remnant of my flock. Remnant of my... What's the remnant of his flock? The churches. The elders. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them 
and will bring them again to their folds. Where are the folds? The church communities that he is going to designate, <coughs> reestablish. And they shall be fruitful and increase. That's the next stage. <coughs> the teachers are now in a state beyond the mortal, beyond the physical, waiting for the Lord to gather those they have fed into the church community. Notice what he goes on to say. What happens when they're gathered into the church communities? Verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. The shepherds are going to feed them. Who are the shepherds? Turn to Joel. Second chapter. Verse 28. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Now what do you say all flesh? Talking about the church community. Everybody is going to receive the infilling of the, 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 the baptism, if you will, Holy of the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yes. So is the baptism and the earnest the same thing? Oh. No. It's the same, not the same no, thing. No, the earnest is received when you teach the elder. Baptism is received when the elder gets to the community. For power and service. Hmm. Yes. Come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. You're going to get the apostles and the prophets office reinstituted. So you're going to have the hierarchy. The angels in heaven communing with the elder group, the leadership group over the community, apostles and prophets, is the way they did in the old, in the old times. Remember, first Peter tells us the prophets received understanding from who? The Holy Spirit. And they prophesied. They ministered to the apostles. But the, the prophets, the apostles and prophets at that point are not elders. They're priests. They're considered elders in the community. Peter says, I'm an elder. Are they inducted into the priesthood? Is the, is the yeah, they're priests, but the word elder there means an individual who's ascended to the authority okay. in which he has ability to exert authority. Okay. It depends on the context and we're using the word elder. Right. It's not referring to <coughs> that point being a king. Okay. It's referring to that point being a mature Christian who has got a responsibility now. To is there any difference between the Hebrew and the, and the Greek? specifically talking about the elder. Is it, it's a different word. Does it mean exactly the same thing? Same thing. If the elders of Israel, it means those that are mature, that have an, uh, aspired to the office of overseeing <coughs> the people. But the elder in the book of Revelation is a king. He's wearing a crown. Differentiating him from the priest, who is an intercessor who carries the name. So we have to look at the context of Scripture. But in this context, we're talking here about the community on earth. 
Today, the office of apostle and prophet are virtually non-existent. Who's receiving revelation knowledge? Nobody. Because you're in an organized religion. You can't get the ministry move of the Holy Spirit. You don't have the unity. You don't have the connection. You don't have the commitment. This is going to happen here. When he reestablishes the communities, when they are in unity, and the Spirit moves upon them, just like it did, Book of Acts, second chapter, they were as one in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit came upon them, 120 men, <clears throat> filled with power, and uh, went down, and they spoke, and the Holy Spirit started falling on all the others. Same thing is going to happen. Once they get gathered, once they are working in unity, in harmony and commitment, the Spirit is going to fall on them. And he goes on to say, Upon the servants of my handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. But what is this all saying? It's saying the community established. Servants, handmaids, they all have duties. Their families, husbands, wives. <clears throat> They're all committed. Why? Because they come out of the beginning of sorrows. They qualify for this period. They are going to be the elder group. But they got to be prepared. The teacher isn't going to be able to give them everything they need. He's just giving them a foundation on which now they can receive. Once they get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the connection with the angel in heaven, connecting with the prophet and the apostle on earth. They are, Remember what we read in Jeremiah. They're going to be fed. They're going to be fed. They're going to be lacking nothing. They're going to have everything they need to prepare them for the time of the rapture, which is the next phase of the Father's plan. So the teacher phase, beginning of sorrows through to the end of the gathering, is the giving the foundation that you're referring to. And then the, the more detailed receipt happens from the end of the gathering. The time they enter into the, the community and the right. spirit falls to the time the rapture takes place. Gotcha. Okay. And so of course the letter doesn't come in until just before the rapture. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because it's giving the performance right. of what they've right. done since they got the instruction, how uh, they handled it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, what we find here are the two groups. Two groups. The beginning of sorrows after the judgment to the time of the Lord's appearing to bestow the reward of the inheritance is for the Prototokos teacher who will ultimately become the angel group in heaven. The period of them entering into the community to the time of the rapture is for the elder, the king group mm -hmm. to be prepared. That's why the angelic group is on a superior plateau to the elder group. They have gone through more they have been prepared in such a way as to carry greater responsibility, greater authority, understanding, greater knowledge. God does all things wisely. And you begin to see his master plan, how he's worked out everything. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Anyway. What we find, <clears throat> turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, 10 to 11. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, <clears throat> he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So the connection takes place first <clears throat> on the Prototokos 
teacher. When the body we talked about comes forth and the teachers are <clears throat> uh, basically <clears throat> taken into their presence that constitutes the body of the angelic section of the prototokis. This is basically what Paul's talking about here. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So basically he's talking about the order of um, gathering will be for the Prototokos teacher <clears throat> because the inheritance goes to him first. The joint inheritance. Those who have experienced the sufferings of earth. And you know, and I was thinking about this before, and I was asking the Lord, I said, my God, why, you, uh, why are you so lenient on us? When you look at what's being said, we have been given the use of vernacular the juiciest position in everything. Paul Paul Paul, Silas, Apollos, the stuff that they went through to qualify, and the little stuff that we go through in the little time. Yeah, it's amazing. But this is the way God has designed things to operate. Could you say that the latter end of the age of grace is more beneficial to the individual than the earlier end? Yes, Jesus talks about that. And he talks about the clock. Mm. <clears throat> and he talks about the, um, the landowner goes out early in the morning, gets laborers. laborers. Go ahead. Well, you know, as a neophyte, I will speak this out. First shall be last, and last shall be first. Mr. Johns, yes, there we go. Yes, so it's been said before we're going to be over, we're going to be last. Yes, so it's not special treatment, it's the just fulfillment of the scriptures. Well, it is special treatment from a human perspective. We should be out here in jail somewhere being kicked and bruised and uh, abused left and right. You're going to uh, invoke the everyone gets the same penny no matter how many hours they work. That's where you were going, right? Yes, yes. But it was the time that they put in mm. that was so greedy. If you had 12 hours, <clears throat> then you had people that went out there at the beginning, 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And they had to work until 12 o'clock. Uh, till 3 o'clock actually when the, when the thing was over. Then you had people that went out two o'clock, worked one hour, and got the same wage as the guy that was working the whole the whole thing. Right, that's us. Right. Yes, that's us. We say, well, you know, praise God. And we come up and grab and moan and groan and complain mm -hmm. about the little stuff that we're you know, that's a shame. I said, Lord, shut my mouth. Don't let anything pass through my lips <coughs> on the order of a complaint. Because this is a gravy thing here with regard to the requirements for this glorious uh, reward of the inheritance. You know, Mr. Jones, I take a lot, a lot of pleasure and delight and contentment to abide in what you just now said. However, because you said it, I think we're going to... Oh, so, piece of cake, huh? Okay, well... Let's put a little seasoning on that for you guys, so you feel like you earned, or you, you qualified, or you may, might be able to be participate in this great thing that I've done. Well, that's one way to look at it, but there's another way to look at it. That from eternity, the Father said, this is going to be your path. And as you walk that path, and you see the path that the others walk, you look at the Father in amazement, and you look at the Father in humility mm. and you thank Him because you see the difference. You see the grace of the Father. We're not saying, uh, wow, you know, 
will put my hands in my you know, lapels and say, yeah, I got it made. I'm saying humility. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for Mr. Jones that repeatedly, over and over and over, gives me a different perspective after I got through thinking I just now added something. All I did was wet my pants. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, oh. You, you, you uh, no. have to agree with them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every second one. <laughs> <laughs> but, brother, as we see, when we look at the Father's plan here, how amazing it is. And we're we're an integral part of it. Praise the Lord. There are no we're other on the words. cutting edge of this no. thing. And um, just to end up on it, what we find, we're looking at the countdown to this thing. Because if we are where I think we are, <coughs> look at Israel. Don't take your face, don't take your gaze off of Israel. That's yes. God's time piece. Yes. As you see what's going on there, if Israel goes, and they say every day it gets closer and closer, Israel's amassing more and more troops and tanks at the border to go in there, to take out Hezbollah, knowing that Iran is right back there, knowing that the other Arab nations of vitriolic hatred, venomous hatred being spewed for the, the other Arab nations are, according to the uh, usage of the Old Testament, <coughs> it speaks about the roaring, the vitriolic hatred, venomous hatred that's going to be moved at Israel consistent. It won't stop until the time of the judgment. The enemy is stirring the pot and they're getting more and more angry, more and more vitriolic uh, uh, motivated to, to take down the Israelites. You see what's happening to spill over here. They're trying to beat up Jewish people. They're trying to uh, denigrate anything Jewish because of the hatred that they have for God's people. So the idea is <clears throat> watch. Don't lose sight of the importance because the enemy is going to try to give us deviant things to focus on. The election and all that, that's good. But if I read my interpretation of scripture right and uh, but what I've been told America is not going to survive this neither are the other countries they're going to go down yeah. but we need to be prepared for the time in which the door opens and we are called forth to do what we are called to do <clears throat> Jesus uses this consistent I'm going to end with this turn to Luke 21 Verse 36. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. We get to stand before Him, we're going to get our reward. You're going to find yourself entering into a position in which you are going to be able to instruct the whole creation. Now, when this happens, the angelic group is not only going to be overseeing the church, they're going to be overseeing all the unfallen creation, primary creation, <coughs> parts that have been preserved in the secondary creation. Like you were seeing with Daniel, mm -hmm. be pretty busy. Right. Going to have access to the Book of Revelation, and you're going to have a very active audience because the angels are very, very interested. Want to know what's happening, what their place is, where they stand. Everybody, every group from the 
Dawn Star Hierarchy to the Lowest Angel. You're going to be able to instruct and teach them every one of them. That's gold. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you know, okay, so we, we know the, the desire to look into these things. Yes. However, okay, so I, I guess I just have to trust in the gathering. I'm, I'm shifted from thinking human to an advanced thinking cycle to where I am not with my mouth open, amazed at what's going on, I know it's going on because I am God's son. And I qualified because he qualified me yep. to be going through this. Yep. You will know unerringly. 